folks, and welcome to a special election edition of Hames Hot Mike. I'm your host, Clint Hames. I'm doing short interviews with the federal candidates for the September 20th federal election, as always trying to keep my viewers as informed and engaged as possible. My guest for this session is Mark Strahl, member of the Conservative Party of Canada and the incumbent MP. Welcome, Mark. Well, it's good to be here. Um, I know that pretty much everybody in Chilliwack would know who you are, I think, and hope, but uh, why don't you just uh, run down a little about your history uh, in your position and in the community, and then we'll get to some questions. Sure. Uh, I'm Mark Strahl. I've, I've been the Member of Parliament here for about 10 years. Uh, my wife, Lisa, and I have been married for 22 years, and we have a 17-year-old son. This is where uh, we've raised our family and, and where I was born and raised, so I I've been a part of this community for uh, my whole life and, uh, and it's been the thrill of my lifetime uh, to represent this community in the House of Commons. Um, uh, just a community full of hardworking, honest people that, uh, that tell you what they think and expect you to go to Ottawa to fight for their interests and uh, I think I've done that in my 10 years as Member of Parliament and I'm hoping that people will give me the chance to keep doing that uh, going forward. Thanks, Mark. Um, I want to get right to uh, some questions here. The uh, Conservatives have talked, I think, about a 10-year plan to balance the budget. Uh, it's currently sitting, uh, the deficit is currently sitting uh, somewhere north of $350 billion. And even with, say, $150 billion coming off um, in spending that was emergency spending related to COVID, we're still going to be left with having to find a um, significant amount of money to begin to balance that budget. There's, there's two ways a budget can be balanced, increasing the revenue or increasing taxes. Um, your plan talks about um, getting the economy moving, which would indicate, well, we've got a plan to increase revenues, but is that going to be enough? Are program cuts going to be necessary? What is, uh, what's some more depth or meat on the bone in the Conservatives' uh, plan? Well, yeah, I think that obviously we believe that we can grow the economy, uh, spur the economy on and, and increase uh, revenues as a result of that. Uh, of course, uh, the parliamentary budget officer has reviewed our plan, which says that we will reduce the deficit by 85% uh, in about five years, but uh, we wanted to be prudent and, and be cautious. And so we've said that we can balance that budget in 10 years through through growth and, and through constrained government spending, not, not cuts, but just not going at the accelerated rate of spending that we've seen, uh, not just during the pandemic, but in the last six years under the Trudeau Liberals, the, the spending has been unsustainable. Uh, they've broken their promise to, to get back to a balanced budget before the pandemic. And certainly now in the last budget, we saw $100 billion in new non-pandemic related spending. We don't think that's sustainable. And we think that you know, if interest rates rise, uh, even with the current interest rates, the servicing on the national debt and the deficit, uh, the cost is approaching the same amount that we spend on health care transfers every year. And that's just unsustainable. Uh, Canadians expect governments to to uh, be able to live within their means. We, we know that the pandemic was a, an exception. We supported the direct payments to people who needed it. But now's the time as we uh, as we hopefully come out of that pandemic to ensure that we, we have a plan to get back to balance. And, and our plan uh, is, is clear on that. And, and like I said, has been uh, verified by the Parliamentary Budget Office that we can do that without program cuts. So we're looking at, you talked about getting out of this pandemic. Uh, should the Conservatives form the next government, they'll be, uh, they'll be forming government right away. We're still really in the teeth of this pandemic. It may in fact simply be a pandemic of the unvaccinated as people are saying, but there's still a lot of issues out there. We're a ways away from um, a normal world at this point in time. What do you see the Conservatives doing differently than the Liberals have done at this point in time to get us from where we are today to getting us to where we need to be with respect to this pandemic? Well, I think I think the first thing that we need to do is is have a plan. Uh, it seems like the government has has had, you know, they, they've kind of stumbled from crisis to crisis in this pandemic. And some of that was uh, early on was to be expected, but we're now 18 months or so into this and we still don't see a plan to get 
back on track. We still uh, we see, quite frankly, just throwing more and more money uh, into uh, into the situation into into government, uh, just continuing to increase expenditures. Uh, and that's simply uh, unsustainable. There's no plan uh, to get people back to work. There's no plan, a, a data-driven plan to even even decide when and if we should, you know, do things like uh, reopen the borders. Uh, the whole way along, this has been kind of a um, an ad hoc, uh, back of a napkin approach. And I think we what we've tried to do is lay out a real plan that's been verified by experts that will uh, show that we're able to uh, bring back jobs. Uh, we, we have a, a five-point plan to bring back jobs, grow the economy, uh, build more things, make more things in Canada so that we're, we're not as unprepared as this government was for the pandemic. Um, our plan has been, uh, has been fully costed and, and fully uh, analyzed, and, and we believe that it, it sets the uh, the agenda for how we will get out of this pandemic stronger and better than ever. So I see I, and, and I understand that's from when we're out of this pandemic and we can start building that, but we're not out of the pandemic. What do we need to do in your mind or in the Conservative Party's mind to get us from where, where we are today to uh, an end to this pandemic? We have people that uh, our, our numbers uh, that everyone follows uh, in British Columbia are still quite startling. Alberta is um, even more startling. And in other parts of the country, we're seeing increases, we're seeing hospitalizations. We're not through this pandemic. You may be taking over government in a few days. Mm -hmm. What's the plan to get us out of the pandemic that the Conservatives want to accomplish that they don't feel like the current government is doing? Well, I think I think to get out of the pandemic, it, it's very uh, very challenging right now. Of course, as we've seen these different waves and the different variants and and how they're reacting uh, to the population. Uh, obviously, it's it's a very difficult thing to predict how uh, the COVID pandemic will unfold. Obviously, we we uh, at the beginning of this, it was you know two weeks to bend the curve, and we were going to kind of. Uh, move along and now we're we're 16 18 months into it and there appears to be uh, anytime we think that we're we're getting an end in sight the uh, uh, COVID uh, proves that it's uh, it's elusive so and we need to we need to obviously work together with the provinces we've said that we will increase uh, health care funding for them we've seen that put under strain uh, and again we need to uh, we need to be putting forward policies, which we have in, in our platform document to spur economic growth, to spur job creation uh, in small businesses, in, in, in our local communities, so that people can uh, get back to uh, some semblance of normal, at least uh, economically, and, and move forward from there. But, you know, there, that Clint is absolutely um, the, the, the true uh, $64 million question is, is how do you how do you plan for for something that has uh, constantly proven so elusive it, it just keeps on changing and and so you have to be agile you have to be uh, work with again with your your provinces uh, your partners to ensure that Canadians have the support they need both uh, through our healthcare system and uh, and economically as well so here's a here's a really challenging question and right now we've got uh, some of the highest vaccination rates in the world, in Canada, through aggressive approaches that have been taken. But the Delta variant came in and is skewing that because it's so transmissible. And we have a, you know, a segment of our population, as has made the news recently, that refuses to get vaccinated. And yet we know that likely one of the ways we're going to get through this pandemic is by uh, ensuring more people than we currently have vaccinated get vaccinated. What are we going to do? Is is the Conservative Party, I know typically uh, it's been a live and let live kind of approach to the pandemic. Is there any ch changes to that policy given where we're at within the structure of this pandemic? Is the Conservative Party going to come out and say, look, OK, it's time. We've got to get through this. We need to start talking about uh, a more mandatory approach to uh, to vaccinations. Well, I, and of course, we don't have a mandatory vaccinations in Canada, but we've been clear that we believe that vaccines are the best tool uh, to help us get out of the pandemic. Uh, we have said that every Canadian who wants a vaccine uh, should be able to get one. We were very concerned with the, the pace at which the government 
procured vaccines at the beginning of the pandemic. We were several months behind uh, our, our, peer country, uh, our peer countries on, on doing that. Uh, but I don't think you can berate people uh, into uh, getting a vaccine. I think you have to address their concerns and treat them with respect. And I think that's been the, the difficulty, the, the thing that I've been troubled by is to watch what I would say is Justin Trudeau using vaccination status as a, a wedge, as a way to attack Canadians and try to drive people uh, into his camp. I don't think that division and discrimination is the way out of this uh, pandemic. We need to come together. We need to address the concerns that have been raised by people who've not yet been vaccinated. And we need to recognize that some people uh, cannot and will not be vaccinated and the way that we, we have to decide how we're going to, as a society, deal with that. We've said that there are ways to, to keep Canadians safe, encourage them to be vaccinated, as many of them as possible. But for those who are unable or unwilling to provide other options like screening and, and testing, accommodations that will allow them to continue to participate in society, uh, while at all at the same time encouraging vaccinations, I don't think the approach of, of using a stick or, or belittling or or uh, antagonizing people is is the way to go. I think we have to find a way that it doesn't devolve into an us versus them society, an us versus them approach. We've seen what that looks like in the United States, and I don't want to bring that kind of politics here to Canada. Thanks for that answer, uh, Mark. There's been some uh, I've I've heard uh, rhetoric, and I've actually I th I think you mentioned it briefly at uh, the debate um, the other night that uh, people are suggesting that the Liberal Party is looking at some sort of asset tax or a tax when people sell their primary residence. I've scoured the internet to see, I've scoured every party's uh, platform uh, and uh, the financial documents that have gone with them and I can't find anything there, but that, um, that keeps persisting through there. Is that in, uh, and I'll ask uh, the Liberal candidate when I get a chance, uh, mm -hmm. is that where in the platform does it say that? Because I've, I've heard that come from um, many people saying this is what they're trying to do. Uh, is, is it there somewhere that well, I don't I, see? I, I think that comes from two places, Clint. The first is that the, the federal government, the Liberal government funded a study, a $250,000 study on how to tax uh, the the assets of of Canadian homeowners, uh, and part of that was a discussion on the capital gains tax, uh, which currently people, when they sell their principal residence, don't have to pay capital gains taxes yeah. on those sales. So the fact that the government funded a study to see if that could be done raised a lot of eyebrows in Ottawa for sure. The second part is that the Liberal platform does include. A, what they've called an anti-flipping tax on primary residences. So even if someone owns a home, lives in it for a period of time, uh, I believe it's a year, and, and sells that home, they would be subject to uh, a tax on, on the profits from the sale of that home. So um, it's the first time really that any, any political party has dipped their toe in and said that they are, they are considering bringing forward a tax on uh, the sale of a uh, principal residence and that's why I think so many Canadian homeowners are concerned that once government gets their hands on uh, on some of it or, or creaks the door open that they'll uh, they'll put their foot in and then they'll be the whole way in and then that asset that most Canadians are using to save for their retirement using to uh, as equity to build their small business for instance suddenly uh, once that comes under the glare of the the federal government. I think uh, Canadians are rightly concerned. And the third thing is, uh, after the Liberals formed government, they made Canadians report the uh, the capital gain to the CRA, to the Canada Revenue Agency, even though it's not taxed. The fact that they are collecting that data and forcing Canadians to share it with the CRA uh, makes Canadian homeowners very nervous. Thank you for that. That clears that up. Um, the uh, Green Party has talked about um, an asset tax on Canadians that uh, have more than $20 million in assets um, as a way of uh, taxing, and there's a, the phrase that's used often is taxing the super rich. Uh, what are the plans the Conservatives have with our tax structure? I mean, 
Tax increases will likely be a piece of the puzzle moving forward as a way to generate revenue. What are the conservative plans around taxation? Well, I think at the beginning of our interview, you talked about what do governments have to do if uh, debts and deficits get out of control. And uh, as you said, if they want to bring that under control, uh, typically you do have to raise taxes or, or cut spending. And that's what we've said uh, we don't we don't agree with the approach to continue to borrow this money. Uh, I think I think uh, taxing assets or calculating assets is very difficult. You might have uh, a Canadian who owns a, a a factory or a manufacturing plant here in Chilliwac. the The valuation of that might be twenty million dollars, but you know, do they have that kind of money uh, in their back pocket? Are they sitting on that, or are they using that those investments to employ Canadians? to put food on the table of, uh, of working people right across our community. So uh, I'd have to see the details on that. We do have a progressive tax system, which, uh, which taxes uh, the wealthier uh, people that, that make more money, pay more taxes. That's how our system works. And, and all parties uh, have agreed with that over the years. So, you know, we can talk about the percentages. Are, are they correct? Uh, I think you have to be careful anytime you're um, looking at a, a, an asset tax I'd, I'd want to look at what that what does that mean does that does that mean that um, again is, yeah. is someone who's providing employment for um, hundreds of people are they are they considered the ultra rich who should should pay more or are they already uh, paying more by by putting more back into the economy giving those jobs etc so I, yeah. I haven't examined those details but we do have a progressive tax system and I think it's it's one that uh, the one that has worked for, for Canadians. I do recall a time, and I can't pinpoint that point in history, when uh, asset taxes were uh, included, I think, as part of a provincial uh, tax regime where, uh, as you say, a person could have a $20 million factory. They may have a $18 million mortgage, but the, it was only a tax on the asset, and the asset wasn't, the, the liability wasn't calculated out of the asset. So right. you were, you were um, it was, uh, as I saw it, a very unfair process. The last thing I want to ask, Mark, is you've been uh, an MP for 10 years, as you say. You have, I know, a close working relationship with local governments in this particular area. What are you being told by local governments are key for them moving forward? Should the Conservatives form government and start uh, spending money? What what do our local governments say we should be spending more federal dollars on here? Well, I think I think you, fed, uh, local governments are, are looking for certainty uh, in terms of, of monies that they receive from the federal government through their gas taxes, for instance. And I think infrastructure is, is always uh, something that that local governments are looking for. I, I know there's there's some projects that have that have gone through, and others, uh, you know, for instance, the uh, Cultus Lake uh, uh, sewer system uh, water treatment there didn't get funded. Uh, they were very disappointed in that. Those kind of things are are the things that that we talk about when when I talk to local governments is their their needs for for infrastructure and and as well I think uh, for for Chilliwack and hope the um, things like the expansion or uh, of the Trans Canada Highway for instance is still something that I hear about a lot as more and more people are, are working out of our community um, and find themselves uh, bottleneck to kind of as soon as they get out of our community. So um, that and, and of course, housing, um, not only affordable housing for people who live here, but uh, those who are unhoused or at risk of that uh, homelessness, that continues to be a priority for, for local governments. And, and uh, certainly that's something that, uh, that I've worked with the local community on and will continue to be an advocate for um, providing uh, supportive housing for those who need it and and especially we, we didn't get into it but there's a part of our platform talks about providing more supports for those that are uh, dealing with addictions I think that's a, that's a key part of homelessness and and something we need to tackle head-on thank you very much my guest has been Mark Strahl who is our current MP and running in this election for the Conservative Party of Canada thanks so much Mark for spending some time with us and thanks to all of you who've tuned in to watch this episode of Hames Hot Mike.